advances in drug discovery against major cancers. My name is Thomas Chen, and um, Sarah Crawford is sitting in the chair there. And um, I will be giving the first presentation today. And the title of my talk is uh, Metronomic Delivery or Chemotherapeutic Agents Using an Implanted Pump for Treatment of Leptin and Geocarcinomatosis. And I basically am the uh, Director of Surgical Neuro-Oncology at the um, University of Southern California. And I also work as uh, Chief Oncology Officer for Powerful Kinesis, which is the company that's building the pump. So, uh, leptomeningeocarcinomatosis, for those of you that may not be familiar, is basically metastatic seeding of the leptomeninges. And it occurs in 5 to 10% of patients with systemic cancer most commonly seen in patients with breast and lung cancer, the highest overall incidence in these types of cancers. And as in any other cancers to the body, um, you can have metastatic spread of um, cancer cells, um, not only to the brain, but to the covering of the brain, which is the leptomeninges. And for these patients have a leptomeningeal spread, um, their survival is very poor. Without therapy, it's about four to six weeks. With therapy, which includes off chemotherapy and sometimes radiation therapy, it's about four to six weeks, four to six months. And about 55% of these patients will die actually within um, even the treatment period, the first few weeks of treatment. And this is a picture of what a leptomeningeal um, carcinomatosis looks like. What you see here is that essentially um, the cancer cells have spread to the leptomeninges, which are the coverings of the brain. And uh, we have leptomeninges to the brain as well as to the spinal cord. And so what you see is that you can have cancer cells that will be on the coverings of the, both the brain and the spinal cord. And so it's a fairly diffuse disease that once you have it, uh, the treatment is very problematic. Um, let me show you a picture of a um, patient that has basically um, a leptomeningeal disease. This patient, um, this is the MRI scan of her brain. And these are eyes here, and that's the nose. And this is the temporal lobe, and this is the brain. And this is the area of edema. And this is her brain tumor after gadolinium enhancement. And what she has is basically that um, underwent treatment for her brain tumor. And that's the after treatment. And then what you see here is that over time she developed what we call leptomeningeal um, spread, and she developed um, uh, metastases to her. So when these patients have leptomeningeal disease uh, right now, what we do is that we give uh, intrathecal chemotherapy, and this is administered usually via a lumbar puncture or a myoreservoir. And uh, most of these patients have a myoreservoirs, and in myoreservoirs what we do is we place a catheter in the ventricle from the outside, and then we administer chemotherapy uh, via intermittent punctures to the reservoir into the ventricle. And, uh, and there have been some, most of the drugs used have been um, deposite, which is liposomal RSC, or methotrexate. And, uh, and there have been phase one trials from people who have injected uh, antibodies via myos uh, for Herceptin or Rituximab uh, for lymphomas. And so uh, we have been particularly interested in trying to make this um, process a little bit more effective for the patients, uh, mainly from the standpoint that um, in the current process, the, even with uh, prolonged treatment, it's a very tedious process and it's not that effective. So what we wanted to do was that we asked the question is that could we build a pump that can be implanted and once it's implanted in the body, we can try to deliver medication deliver, uh, continuously without reimplanting a catheter. Uh, because of the fact that this pump is implanted, we are looking for a metronomic continuous delivery of drug. And we were looking at um, the concept of continuous delivery, but continuous delivery based on how much we deliver based on imaging feedback as well as physiological feedback, meaning be able to sample the spinal fluid, be able to tell on the basis of some parameters on the spinal fluid whether we were making um, um, good
still work in our treatment. We want a pump that could be um, um, where delivery can be adjustable from, so that we can do it from outside. So basically a Wi-Fi control that will allow you to turn the pump on and off to di deliver different types of medications at different rates. This pump uh, also be allowing for instant monitoring and feedback of tumor parameters. And the first parameter we were looking at is measuring uh, VEGF levels. And because of the fact that it's de directly delivered into the spinal fluid, we thought that this would be very good for minimizing systemic side effects. Um, and, 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 and because of the fact that it's directly going to the spinal fluid, we don't have to worry about the blood-brain barrier. And we can also bypass the first pass hepatic metabolism. And this pump has several um, bellows so that it can also allow for um, combination therapy. So I, first of all, I'm going, I'm going to show you a, a video of this pump in, um, of this pump, and then I'll show you some other works with it. This, this says intro tomorrow, but this is basically, our first model is uh, for leptomeningeocarcinomatosis, which would be basically delivering to the spinal fluid. So you can see that um, you know the, the, the pump then is built so that so that it can be um, implanted. So it'll basically be implanted in the chest. The catheter will go up and be implanted the catheter. And the doctor or is going to be outside and going to be monitoring the delivery. And and you can see that basically it has several canisters so that you can do combination therapy. Um, you can turn it on and off, and then you'll be able to, s to sample how you're doing by the spinal fluid as it comes back for VEGF levels. So that's the basic um, um, working to the to that pump. Now, um, what now? What I want to show you now is basically the the pump as it is right now. Um, Basically, so here's the here's the pump in a schematic format here, right? And um, you see all these um, these are the canisters. So there's two. The way we have it set up right now is that there are two delivery canisters, and then one um, canister for um, collecting spinal fluid as it comes back. And then this is the power sensor that essentially will allow you to. So this pump you can charge it from the external um, source and so that your battery doesn't run out. And
and, and, and so what we have uh, with this pump right now is that we have a prototype that has been built. And you can see with this prototype that we're, right now we're at the stage of um, doing animal studies. And then after the animal studies, we hope to get an IDE from the FDA for implanting the human beings with leptomangial carcinomatosis. But, um, so here's the pump, and here we are basically filling the pump with uh, medication. And then here's the pump again. And so our first um, large animal study was in pigs. And this is, a, um, this is a CT scan reconstruction of a sagittal cut of a pig brain. The pig brain is fairly small, as you may imagine. Um, and this is the snout. And the, here's the brain itself here. Okay, and then this is the ventricle. So our goal was to implant a catheter into the ventricle and then deliver the medication, this large animal model. And so here it is, uh, with the pig. Uh, here's the eyes of the pig. Here's the incision. And then what we've done is we've made a hole in the uh, skull from, with, with a burr hole maker. And then the catheter is then inserted into the ventricle. And then what's happening now is that the pump is delivering medication into the pig. And, and then uh, here is the model with the pump that's implanted. And what you see here is that here's the implanted pump and here's the catheter tip. Now this is the prototype model for this pump. And what you'll see is that um, when we actually miniaturize it further, the, the whole size would basically be about the size of like an iPod that will go into the chest. And then this is the external GUI that essentially allows you to monitor how much medication. So this GUI you can see here is set up for two bellows with delivery. So you can deliver two medications at different rates or different combinations. And then when you suction back from the spinal fluid, this is sort of the waste reservoir or the CSF reservoir where you can sample different levels of VEGF. And when we were doing our experiments, one of the first things we want to do was make sure that essentially that our pump is very consistent, it pumps at the same rate. And so this is based essentially uh, a measurement of, of, of our um, of bellows. And what you're seeing here is essentially flow, meet flow documented that essentially is flowing at about the same rate. Um, and then also the bellows as it empties out goes like that and then the pressure output is the same over time. And also with the anesthesiologist data, we want to make sure that there was no change in the heart rate, um, pulse of the animal as we uh, delivered. And then we were also uh, very interested in measuring um, basically ICP. Uh, ICP meaning that when we pump into the um, pig brain and the ventricle that there was no change in the intracranial pressure. And basically what we found is that the intracranial pressure is very steady throughout. And then this is, um, what we do is we pump methylene blue into the into it. And, and so what you can see is that after delivery, um, the, the pump is able to deliver into the ventricle and then it goes throughout the whole left of meninges covering the surface of the brain. So our, our vision for this pump is that this is a uh, potentially a new model for local delivery, um, supplemented by systemic delivery of heat radiation therapy. I want to emphasize to you that this pump is not designed so that it um, replaces systemic, um, systemic chemotherapy or radiation therapy. It's basically a better way of controlling uh, local delivery. And, and, but the unique thing is that we want to have this implanted so that you can have prolonged metronomic local delivery. And this is also unique in that it's going to have physiological and imaging feedback. We're also looking for partnering with various pharmaceutical companies to develop new class of drugs and formulations uh, that would be body temperature stable, that can be, you know, be implanted both in the pump and deliver. As I said before that, our first model is leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. We picked that model because of the fact that we want to deliver into fluid, and then when we sample back, we're sampling back fluid so we make sure we don't clog up our pump. But later on, um, we want
want to look at other cancer models, including perineal metastases, ovarian carcinoma, and also for solid tumors, which are difficult to operate on or high risk, like brain cancer or pancreatic carcinoma. And then I have um, another video that I would like to show you. And this, is, this video is basically looking at the concept of, like I said, that when we get an MRI scan of the patient, we want to be able to predict on the basis of the MRI imaging how much drug we're going to be delivering. And this spinal fluid circulating. So, so that's the so that's the vision in terms of the deliveries that um, you'll be able to look at the MRI scan and say, well, this is how much tumor is in the brain or in the spinal cord. But this is how much we need to um, deliver. Um, is basically that uh, methylmangiocarcin plus is almost fatal. Our current treatment is limited by delivering drug efficacy. We're looking at developing um, new drugs that will target tumor cells. And then new devices such as the metronomic um, uh, delivery pump can be useful for continuous delivery. I think from the standpoint of cancer uh, discovery, uh, what we're looking for is uh, uh, partnering uh, to um, make a new set of drugs that are going to be body compatible. This pump will allow for um, essentially much better local control um, that's currently available. So if you have um, a pump like this, you can essentially be capable of using for any cancer in the body where you want to deliver drug to a specific area, um, get better local control of that area, even after surgery, with or without surgery, and then still continue with their chemo, systemic chemotherapy, still continue, continue the radiation therapy. Those are, this pump is not meant to replace that, you know, because cancer is a systemic disease. But by better local control, I think that you can, there's many diseases where we can make a big impact on a patient's survival. Thank you very much. So now what I'd like to do is also, um, oh, and also before I, and I just want to make sure that 
we give proper acknowledgement for the people at Farm for Penisa that helped with the building of the pump, especially Josh Shakar, Frank Adele, and then the Farm for Penisa's engineering team, Winston Wu, Brett Jordan, Herwin Chan, Kyle Zimmerman, and Kelvin Lupo. Any questions? Yes. Have you tried it by dialing for cancer? Because um, also um, the local delivery. The, the liver cancer? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so that's one of the targets that we're in very interested in doing. Um, again, like I said, that our this is our first model because um, you know we, we want to pick a uh, model where essentially um, this is the area that I'm involved with, with neurosurgery. Um, but diseases like liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, they're all good targets for something like this. So. Will this be developed into portable pump? Yes, well, I mean, portable from the standpoint, this is all gonna be implantable. But implantable? Yeah, so this is an implantable pump and, and now for leptomeningeocarcinomatosis, um, where you can imagine the pump is set up here mm -hmm. and it's gonna be delivering into the brain. Okay, now like her question about like liver cancer, uh, it can be potentially implanted here. And then you can fill up your drug, et cetera. Now, the thing about the pump is that right now, you know, we're, what we're really fighting against is the size of the pump versus how much and what we can deliver. Because we don't want to have something that's extremely bulky that makes it hard to be implanted. And so, so from the standpoint of what you deliver, that also has to be thought about. But, but we're thinking that basically this pump would not just be delivering chemotherapy. Um, it can potentially deliver cytokines, immunomodulating agents, okay, drugs that may have a lot of systemic side effects if you give it, but if you give it locally, it may be actually pretty good. I know the cooker with a very small computerized device control. Yes, so, so, that's, the, so that's, one of the, that's one of the unique aspects of this because it's got an external GUI. And with the external GUI, you can basically from outside, you can say, go, stop and you can program so that you know on days one to five you're delivering bell a on day five to ten you're delivering bell b and you can cycle it and then and then when you run out you just basically don't be a nipple that you can fill underneath the skin puncture it and put and fill up your bellows again and, uh, and so potentially you could, you know, basically be using it for a period, sustained period of time. Any other questions? All right, then uh, what we'll do is go to um, our next presentation and Sarah Crawford will be uh, doing the presentation.